Thank you for tuning in to RTM Nation Online, where we believe that you will receive the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. If you would like to learn more about the ministry, click the link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into the message. Lord God, I just thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. Lord God, I pray that as the word goes forth, you are transforming lives, ministering peace, understanding. And I just pray that your perfect will is accomplished as a result of what takes place here today, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you take all of me, Lord God, and just speak exactly what you have for your people. And I pray that if anybody's sitting here any pain or discomfort, I pray that healing goes forth as the word is being ministered, Lord God. And Lord God, I just thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to die so that we may live a life free, full of all of the things necessary for us to accomplish all that you've put in force in front of us to accomplish. And we just thank you, God, for this time. We present it to you as an offering, and we pray that as a result, we will all go out and live a life victorious in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Well, hug the person next to you. Tell them you love them. Say, I'm glad to see you. And uh, last week, you know, last week we started a, I started a message on Thanksgiving. And the, the, the goal was to finish it last week, but I could tell five minutes into it that that was not going to happen. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue teaching today, and I'm just going to go as far as we have time to go and as far as God wants us to go, and then we will keep on going Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. But God just ministered something so just powerful to me, you know, and it came from the area of Thanksgiving. And obviously we were celebrating Thanksgiving last weekend. You guys know it's officially expiration date on any leftovers <laughs> that you may have. Like, I know this is a hard discussion in many households when the actual expiration date occurs for leftovers. I'm here to announce that it is over. <laughs> You should not be eating anything that was cooked on Thanksgiving unless it was preserved by way of freezing and you're unthawing it. You should not be eating anything, amen? amen. Otherwise, you will be up here for healing. <laughs> But during that time, God just, he just started to just speak to me about, about being thankful. And when you're thankful, there's so many things that are built up in the life of a believer who's just thankful. You know, I, I was, as Greg, my brother, was teaching on Wednesday night, I just saw so many things come to life. And, you know, we all know that, that, as a process of a believer that we're constantly renewing our minds to understanding what the word has to say about us, what the word has to teach us. You know, if you grew up and you kind of know, hey, man, you know, I learned a lot of things through my experience. But now that I've come into the knowledge of Christ, I want to know what it's like to be saved. I want to know what it's like to live a life for Christ. And through leading the word and going through the Bible, our mind gets renewed to the things that God has for us in this new life that we're a part of. Amen. Amen. And so what keeps us open, though? What keeps us, us open to receive all that God has to say? Because how many of you guys know if jealousy is there, if strife is there, if pride is there, if, if there's just all types of bitterness is there, it's hard for seeds of a new thing to take root into something that is just overflowing in pride. Something that's overflowing in bitterness, overflowing in jealousy. It's like as soon as somebody speaks something positive to you because you just a jealous person, it's like it just gets tangled up and they're trying to figure out, no, 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 that's not what I said. No, that's not what I meant. You ever had a great conversation planned for somebody? And then when you got to them, it ended up going sideways. 
And you were like, I did not know what I was walking into. You got to understand. I just apologize for even coming here. I, I honestly came here with good intentions on my heart. But when I showed up, something happened. And I just apologize. You know, a lot of times what happened is if, if you run into a person that has some things that they're dealing with, whether it's bitterness, anger, resentment, jealousy, they lack trust, all these different types of things. You're sitting there spewing out all this good stuff, and it's just getting muddled up, and it's like, oh, what's going on? Well, hey, man, as we are listening to the word and you're hearing what God has to say about your life, what well, God's saying that applies to you. If we don't purify, cultivate our hearts and our minds to receive what he's saying, that same entanglement can take place. And that's why the Bible tells us we are to renew our minds. And so that when God's speaking to us, we don't get entangled and the cares of this world that are no longer ours. Right. We don't get entangled in the fears that he no longer given us. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. So fear doesn't have to take place in you understanding what God has to say about you. And so what does thankfulness do? And I said, man, thankfulness is a powerful prescription to clearing all that up. Thankfulness makes sure that in any state I'm in, if I'm thankful, just simply thankful. You know, I may not understand the five steps to, to, to getting out of jealousy. I may not have received the message of how to clean up bitterness. I may have not read the book on how to deal with strife. And man, I didn't get the message on what to do with pride. But because I'm thankful, because I remain in a place of gratitude, because I remain in a place of appreciation, Something I understand. How many of you guys understand what it means to be thankful? Yeah. Something I understand. If I just remain in this place, I'm able to ward off a lot of those things. So, okay, I'll get to the book, but until I get to the book, I'm going to be thankful. Because as long as I'm thankful, I'm not concerned about what you have and what I don't have. So jealousy's not coming. As long as I'm thankful, I'm not bitter about what someone should have did and they didn't do. Why? Because I'm thankful for where I am. As long as I'm thankful, you know what? Pride's not rising up because I'm thankful for who you are. And that's what we dove in real deep last week. I'm so thankful of the people I get to labor amongst that I, it's hard for me being pride towards what's going on with them. You know, I, it's not about me because I'm happy about who I'm with. I'm thankful that there is somebody here with me because I could be alone. Amen. And I'm just going through the introduction. Amen. Because <laughs> today, you know, now I went through, there's about eight different things and it's, this is, this is the dangerous part about stuff like this, you know. There was eight last week. I, there's probably 15 this week. So, you know, <laughs> 15 things that thankfulness will do. But, and there's probably even more, but Holy Spirit will shut me up when it's time. Amen. Y'all can laugh at that. <laughs> but Thanksgiving as a lifestyle, you know, I was looking and I said, God, what, what is taking place? You know, there's been a lot of conversations going on about, man, does God, does God send the problems that I have? Are they the plan of God or is that, is that Satan sending these problems? You know, there's been a lot of conversations about that. People are, people are, are, are some people are still in a, a state of confusion of whether or not the trouble I'm facing is God sent trouble or is this Satan sent trouble? Because if it's God sent trouble, I'm okay with it. But if it's Satan sent trouble, I don't want it. I mean, you guys know, by the grace of God, God's not sending trouble no more. You know, you can read in your Bible, when God sent trouble, it was trouble. When God sent problems, there were situations and circumstances. When God wanted to get people, he got people. 
God is not part-time on trouble sending. <laughs> if you are still standing, <laughs> and we talked about it, with, when God wanted to test Abraham, what did he do? He asked for his son. God is not in the business of trying to destroy his people. He said, I send my son not to condemn the world, but to save the world. But what we do have to understand is there is an adversary. That's an enemy. Amen. And there is an enemy roaming around seeking whom he may devour. But what we don't lose light of is there's an advocate. A standby. Ready to launch out at every single thing that comes our way. And he is ministering to us through every single storm that comes our way. Every single situation that, that may arise in life. Amen. Amen. And so what do we want to do? We want to make sure that, hey, when the storm comes, or if I find myself in a storm, that I don't allow myself to switch systems. And what happens? What, what's on the challenge? What's on the brink? Well, if, if I'm facing something that is, seems so large, it seems so big, it seems so just overwhelming, it's just I, just, I just feel like it's taking over every single part of who I am and it's just consuming so much of my life. If I find myself in that situation, and I know I have an advocate that has made a way of escape, then it has to be my desire to find out what my advocate is saying about this situation. But what makes sure that I stay completely open through my storm to hear what the advocate is saying? Thankfulness. Thankfulness. Amen? All right. So let's go. Let's, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, and I'll be reading the Amplified Version. Because Thanksgiving reminds me of his power being at work in my life. It just reminds me. Y'all ready? And I'm reading verse 18. It says, thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for you. Who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and the mediator of that will. And so there we're given, and, and, and this letter was written by Paul and he was writing this letter really to a young church, letting them know how to live a lifestyle for Christ. And he was telling them one of the ways to live a lifestyle is to be thankful. As a Christian, we should be striving to be thankful. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5, and I'm not going to turn to all of them, but I'm just going to say them so you can go look it up in your time. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, it lets us know that we have three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. But also lets us know that God is 100 committed to the completeness of them all. That's right. He wants to make sure that you're complete not only in your spirit, but in your soul and in your body. What's your soul? Your soul is your mind, your thinker, your chooser. That's what's, that's what's, that's what's causing you to decide, you know, whether you go left or right has to do with the choice that you made. But if our minds aren't renewed to what God has to say about us, you can have a, a conflict going on on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. And that's why I say, you know, thankfulness provides purification in the mind of a believer. It's our minds. It's our minds that, that, that sometimes creep up in the midst of a storm and say, is God with me? It's our minds that sometimes creep up and say, man, this couldn't be happening to me because look who I am. 
This can't be happening to me. I, I've, I've read, I've prayed, I've done this, I've done that. And it's our mind that gets in the way and says, there must be something I'm missing. There must be something that I did wrong. There must be something that I got off of the reason why I am where I am. But it's our spirit that's constantly saying to us, no, nope, God's got you. Our spirit is saying, remember in every scripture that we read that the righteous will not be forsaken. And he never see his seed begging bread. That's your spirit coming alive saying, no, no, no. Don't listen to what your mind is saying. Renew what your mind is telling you and let your mind know that it is God who's in control. Do not allow this situation to stain how you see God. Amen. Unstained. See, I'm unstained. Amen. Thanksgiving reminds my mind that it's my it's not my story, but it's his glory that I'm in pursuit of. Thanksgiving reminds my mind that it's not my story, but it's his glory that I'm in pursuit of pursuit of. How many of you guys know you can you can get caught up in a situation and you want it to end a certain way, start a certain way and go a certain way? Because that story sounds great. All right, y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. I understand. Every, we have plans of victory, our own plans of victory. God's going to take me out this way. God's going to bring me out this way. God's going to deliver me through that gate because that gate is blue, and I love the color blue. <laughs> God's going to deliver them next Tuesday because Wednesday I have a vacation. <laughs> and I'm not going on my vacation with that issue. <laughs> but Thanksgiving reminds us, reminds us that it's not our story that we're in pursuit of. But it's his glory. It's, it's his ability and power showing up Amen. that I'm in pursuit of. And so although the story is not being written the way I would have wrote it, because I'm not in pursuit of a beautiful story, but I'm in pursuit of his glory showing up in my situation, I'm able to be thankful for where I am. See, my mind isn't going to get tricked into thinking that God's not with me because it, the story is not being written the way it's supposed to be written according to me. But I will remain pure before heaven, thankful for what he brings, because I understand it's his glory that I'm in pursuit of. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. God will never leave you or forsake you, but our minds have to be renewed. God's not leaving you. God's not forsaking you. But your mind will sometimes tell you that he's gone. He ain't around. He ain't nowhere near. How could God be near me in this situation? How many of you guys know when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was sitting in the furnace, I mean, it was pretty easy, you know, once they were in the furnace to understand that God was with them because they wasn't getting burnt up. But when the story was being written that sounded like it was sending them to the furnace, that was the moment to kind of say, okay, God, are you, are you with us? Because we walking towards this furnace, and these ain't fake flames, God. These are real flames. I mean, the brothers that are walking with us are getting burnt up, turning the thing up higher and higher. Now, I'm committed to your glory, but I don't like how this story is being written. Because this story looks like it might get me burnt up. <laughs> But what do we know? They have made a commitment. It is not, it is, we, we will not bow down before any other thing than our God. And if this is how the story is being written, at some point, the glory of God is going to manifest in this situation. And although those flames are real, this walk is real, that furnace is getting hotter. 
I will go in, but I will not be stained. I will go in. I will not feel the effects of what's supposed to take place. And they looked at him. And the king looked in and said, King Nebuchadnezzar looked in and said, man, I thought we sent three of them in there. They looked around. He said, man, I see, I see four. I see four. Why? Because they were not alone. Although there was many points <laughs> along this story that you would say, hey, man, God could have jumped in then. <laughs> like, why, why did we have to wait for the, for the real, for, why we had to wait for the real deal? Like, like, God, couldn't you have done something in between? <laughs> Ooh. But how great. How awesome, how powerful is the timing of when his glory showed up? Yeah. 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 I, gotta, I tell people all the time, you got you to understand something. God's waiting for that moment of when it cannot be denied that it was him and him and only him that delivered you. See, I tell people all the time, look, you got to understand, God wants one thing and that's all the credit. Just give it to him. Stop trying to fight for the credit. Give it to him. He wants it. He wants all of it. He wants there to be no doubt that it was him and only him that could deliver you from the situation and the circumstances that you may be facing. But what you have to understand is his story. It's his story. And we, good thing we don't have the, you know, uh, there's your, only your imagination <laughs> can answer the question of what would have happened if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have bent down? Like, what if they would have worshipped? Like, what, what? I can tell you where they wouldn't have been in this Bible. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can only imagine what would have happened, but I can tell you one place they wouldn't have been. And that's in that book. <laughs> but God had a story he wanted to tell because he had, he, had a, he had a place he wanted to place them in his book of life to be a testimony of how God will never leave you, how God will never forsake you. Man, there's, there's, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it since we're over there. Um, man, you know what? And, and I'm going to do it. Hey, man, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm trying to give the short version, not reading through the story. But I at least got to read uh, uh, the, first, the first part. What is it? Daniel 3. Put up Daniel 3, just verse 1. Put it up in the Amplified version. You guys got it? Thanksgiving renews my mind to the fact that it's my spirit that's in control of my life. Pastor used to tell us all the time, spirit fed, spirit led. It's just you keep feeding it, you keep feeding it, and it just reminds your mind, like, hold up, mind. You are not in control here. The spirit of God is in control of my life. Mind, you will not try to write the story of my victory because the spirit of God is living it out for me. I will not disconnect from the system that has me connected to the glory that's going to come. Man, I wish I would have got the rope. I was thinking of all types of stuff, but I'd be thinking of stuff. But man, I was like, I seen a rope. I'm just going to tell the example. I seen the rope. And I was like, God, what are you showing me? But it's like the manifestation of what God has for you can be tied to that plant, right? And you have a rope. I, just imagine I have a rope, amen, and the rope is tied to that plant. And as God, the Bible tells us, that I draw near unto God, he's drawn near unto me. And when the rope is there, and I, how many of you guys know I can be pulling on the rope, right, and coming close, but depending on how much rope I let out, there could be slack. 
And see, when they're slack, although I'm progressing, I don't feel the tension. But what Thanksgiving does, Thanksgiving removes the slack out of our lives. And you start to feel the presence of God operating in your life. It's not that it's not getting, it is getting closer. What God has promised you is coming. But if you aren't giving him thanks and realizing that he is ever present in your life, you may not feel. You may not feel it. (laughs) But it's happening. God's promises are yes and amen. But when I give thanksgiving to God, I pull the tension. I I I pull the slack out of me understanding and seeing what God's doing in my life because Thanksgiving opens me up to see him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, verse one, and we're just going to read verse one, but I read this and I said, I got to read this to him because this is going to This is going to help some people. But Nebuchadnezzar the king caused to be made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits or 90 feet and its breadth six cubits or nine feet wide. He set it up on the plain of Dor in the province of Babylon. And when I read that, I said, God, there's a whole message in verse one. How many of you guys know That looks good. That looks right. This is a gold statue, a huge gold statue that's been erected. And the command was to worship what he had created as a symbol, as a symbol of of his God. And I tell people all the time, you got to understand something. And this is why we have to commit to the spirit of God and not to our own stories. Anybody that is just walking around and saying what looks good must be God would have seen that statue and said that has to be God. Look at it. It's made of gold. Look at it. It's huge. Look at it. It's massive. And the king has called it into commandment. And a lot of times in our lives, we find ourselves in the midst of a storm and somebody has erected a statue of gold that looks good. It looks right. It looks like our way out. It looks like this is this got to be the deliverance God is sending our way. But every single thing that's telling you that is your mind. It's appealing to your senses. It's not appealing to your spirit. He erected something that appealed to their senses. That if you had a sense relationship with God, you would have said, that has to be God. Look at how glorious it is. Look at how magnificent it is. It has to be what God has for his people. But it wasn't. And it's amazing to me the extent that Satan will go at times to erect monuments in our lives that don't represent God at all. It's amazing to me sometimes the extent Satan will go to erect monuments in our lives that appear to be God. He'll send the person that had every single thing on your list checked. He'll send a scenario that had everything right but one thing. He'll send a job, a car, a person. He'll he'll do everything but there'll always be something left unchecked. Always. Always something left unchecked. And it's your spirit that's telling you it all looks good, but something's wrong here. How many of you guys know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, man, that looks good, but there's something real wrong with that statue. All y'all can bow down if you feel like it. But we know the living God, the the powerful God. And I've always been amazed at how God isn't, (laughs) God doesn't always build statues of where he is.
But it always speaks to your heart. Thanksgiving renews my mind in the midst of any storm to keep my heart fixed on Jesus and my actions in line with his word. Storms are designed to cause separation between you and God's purpose for your life. But Thanksgiving provides connection and protection. Amen. Amen. What is this, 1038? Can I use my 16 minutes that's on that clock? Let's go to Philippians 4 and 6. I'm going to read in the Amplified Version. Y'all ready? And it says, do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstances and in everything, be by prayer and petition, definite requests with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God, being content with all its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. And pastors always tell us, he says, worry about nothing, but pray about everything. And when I look at this, it says, with prayer and with thanksgiving. And it's a mixture. What is thanksgiving doing in the midst of my prayers? It's reminding me that God is forever present where I am. And see, when, I, when, when you read this, it says, in a tranquil state, a short of his salvation, whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding. Peace that transcends all understanding. You know, understanding is what you know about a situation. Understanding is not lies. And a lot of people look at, look at believers and say, y'all just don't like to face the truth. How many of you guys have heard that? People say, man, y'all just believe everything and y'all don't want to face the truth. These are facts. You're sick. These are facts. You're broke. And y'all just don't want to, y'all don't want to look at the truth. Y'all just be confessing stuff and believing stuff. And y'all don't be looking at reality. How many of you guys ever had somebody talk to you like that? Just keep believing the way you believe in it. You're going to find somebody. Just trust me. At some point in your walk of faith, you're going to find somebody to say, y'all just don't like the facts. Y'all just won't look at the truth. Y'all just won't understand what's really going on with you. But what they did not read is this scripture that tells me God will give me a peace that transcends all understanding. You know what transcends means? Transcends means go beyond the limits of. And God, through thanksgiving and prayer, will give me a peace that transcends, go beyond the understandings of what I know about the situation. Oh, man, and how powerful is that? Well, that's powerful enough for me to understand that when Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, he was all right because he understood this is a real den. These are real lions. This is a real pit. But yet I have peace that passes the understanding of all these real facts. Why? Because I'm thankful that I'm connected to a God that's able to deliver me from whatever this may be. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I'm not afraid of what the facts are because his peace also mounts guard over my heart. Oh. See, all these things may be happening, but they cannot stay my belief because God has given me a peace that transcends what I understand. And it has mounted guard yeah. over my heart. It has mounted guard 
over my mind. So although I may be here, this is not where I will stay. And I will not disconnect. I will not allow this isolation of what looks like isolation to cause separation between me and God. I won't do it. That's what, that's what, when you look at Jonah, Jonah, where is he by himself? Isolation. Isolation. Storms come that try to separate you from everything that you believe that God is. What happens? Oh, man, this thing is coming. Man, they, they, they're talking about taking my house. Well, a lot of people have their belief and trust that, man, I know God is real because I have this house. But what happens when the storm comes and challenges the house that you have? How I many you guys know there has to be another place? That you know. Say, hey, wait a minute. That was the fruit of what God is in my life. That was the result of something that he blessed me with. But this, this, this storm that's brewing, this storm that I see, this storm that I am, no, 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 no. It can't take my relationship with God. Amen. And it cannot harm what I have grown and what we are growing and what God's doing. Yeah, the story might not be written the way I thought it should be written. But God is with me. God will never forsake me. God is giving me a peace that transcends everything I know about all this stuff. And it's guarding heart over my mind. It's guarding heart over my spirit. So that I remain connected to the source. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When you pray with thanksgiving, on your heart, God will download his peace and his tranquil soul assured of his salvation. God's peace covers all understanding, everything you know about a thing and will protect your heart and mind. God will download a peace that protects your heart and your mind from receiving all that you understand about what's going on. That just, that just, that just touched me in so many ways. You know, because you find yourself in times, and I, I've, I've prayed with people that they went to the doctor. They got the diagnosis. This is not, this is not a lie. What they're saying is true. What they have diagnosed is a fact. And a lot of times you find ourselves there and we're like, deny, 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 deny. Because we, we see that as the, or the, the point of deliverance. If I don't accept it, then it won't be mine. God's like, wait a minute. It's not yours because I sent my son and he's, he, he's, he's promised healing through what he did in his resurrection. And I've also made sure that in thanksgiving and prayer that what they're saying about this will not become your reality. I will mount guard over your heart yes. and your spirit. Yes. I'm mounting guard. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll say it another way so it's even plainer. It's God that's doing the delivering. It's God that's done the delivering. And it's him that's protecting these things for becoming a reality of who you are. Man, I thought he was good, but I didn't realize he was that good. God's so good. Hey, Amen. Thanksgiving in the midst of my storm. Thanksgiving presents <clears throat> evidence of my victory 
in the midst of my storm. Man, when I'm thankful, it's like just sending up evidence of victory because of what I know. What do I know, man? I know that my God will never leave me. My God will never forsake me, but he will be with me. And so I'm thankful. What does thankfulness do? Thankfulness of me knowing that sends up evidence of my victory. It just says, I know I'm victorious. Thanksgiving reminds your mind in the midst of your storm that it is God who's in control. That's what it's doing. Thanksgiving reminds me that the fight is fixed and my victory has already been paid for. Thanksgiving in my storm moves my focus from the problem and presents my heart open to receive direction for my victory. And I'm going to close right here giving you guys these scriptures. In Isaiah 43 and 16. Y'all call these storm protectors if you want to call them that. But what did God promise us there? God promised that he's forming rivers in our desert. He's clearing paths in our wilderness. And he's making a way where there is no way. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful. He already told me he's doing impossible things in impossible situations. So the furnace don't scare me. The den don't scare me. Because <laughs> I know how my God operates. How you guys ever been, you know, with somebody and it was your, your clear intent to, to help them, to do everything you could for them. But you just met this person, so the nature of your relationship was very new. And then, you know, upon maybe doing something, they come back to you. It's like, man, I thought you would be there for me, but you weren't there. And you're saying, thinking like, man, but I, I, I was there. What hasn't been established? The nature of your relationship, the nature of your care was unknown. They just didn't know how you care for people. It's not that you didn't care. It's just you just don't happen to be the person that texts every single day. You're the person that calls once a month. You're the person that actually don't call. You just pray. They didn't understand the nature of how you take care of people. And a lot of times we find ourselves in situations wanting to name, write our own story of how God takes care of us. And God just told us, I make a way where there is no way. I form rivers and deserts. I make pathways in the wilderness. What does God tell me? God's like, look, I make impossible situations very possible. It's the nature of my care. I can't leave that alone. Y'all hear what I just said? God has a way he cares for his people. And it ain't small. It ain't insignificant. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's massive. And when he does it, it will only bring glory to who he is. Some people are like, man, my situation seems so impossible. Thanks be to God, because this is, this is the nature of his care. He's set up for impossible situations. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so thankful that I'm, I'm hooked up with a G-O-D that works in the impossible situations. <laughs> Thanksgiving reminds me that in the midst of my storm, I, God has never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. That's Psalms 37 and 45. 
Thanksgiving reminds me that although the weapon may form, it shall not prosper. That's Isaiah 54 and 17. The weapon may form, but it shall not prosper. It shall not come to flourishing. It shall not win. Why? Because I serve a God who makes a way where there is no way. Oh, I'm thankful for his relationship. Oh, I'm thankful for his love. Oh, I'm thankful for his grace. Thanksgiving speaks to the storms in my life and reminds me that my God's not only enough, he's more than enough. Storms are designed to isolate you in the midst of your transition into his glory. It's meant to isolate you, make you feel like you're alone. But you're not alone. Wherever you're facing, wherever you see yourself today, you are not alone. Be thankful that you have a God, that you serve a God, that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ who paid the price for every single thing, every single situation that you may be facing. And he's already prepared a way of escape. Amen. Amen. And we'll go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I'm going to read this in, in close got 33 seconds. There's <laughs> the word ministering peace to your hearts today. Amen. 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 Yeah, 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 I heard what y'all said. Oh, yeah, 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 I heard what y'all gonna do. I know what they said. I, I, I know what they're going to do. I know they promised they was going to fire everybody they see. I know they're going to go ahead and just do all these different types of things that they say they're going to do. But I'm thankful that I serve a God that knows how to deal with impossible situations. That is set up to deal with things that are true. Yeah. Yeah. But he's also given me a piece that transcends what even what I understand about it. So, man, there's some good facts. <laughs> but they cannot penetrate my heart. They cannot penetrate my spirit because the God I serve has mounted a guard over me. Amen. Amen. For no temptation, reading in verse 13, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, Amplified, for no temptation, no trial regarding as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance. And that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience. And such as a man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature. That's his nature. And he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure, but with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out, the means of escape, a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. <sighs> Amen. And so that's that's the God who we serve. When people run into believers and say, you guys are just so full of joy. You guys are so full of life. You're so full of peace. It's because we serve a God that it's his nature. It's his desire. It's his, it's his will. It's his, it's his intent to make a way where there is no way. So although it may look like the storms and the waves are rising up high, I serve a God that has prepared a way. And I will stay committed. I will stay believing. I will stay thankful for who he is 
and the sacrifice that his son has made. Because although it may seem impossible, although it may, it, it may seem as though this situation is far more than any one person could bear, I serve a God that has already overcame it all. And he's ministering my way out. He's ministering my way of escape. Hallelujah. No, it's not my story that I'm after. And no, if I would have wrote it, I wouldn't have wrote it like this. But it's his glory that's going to be shown yes. through my life. Yes. Yes. It's his presence, his power, his ability, his strength in which I am pursuing and after. So I don't have fear. I don't have doubt. I don't have worry. I don't have concern. Because I'm thankful about what I know. I'm thankful about what he's told me. I'm thankful about what he's promised me. I'm thankful about what his son did. Yeah. I stand in gratitude and appreciation. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. But God is truly with us. I love the example Pastor used to always do of favor surrounding us like a shield. Just downloading that 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 mental image of what's spiritually taking place. Man. No one here is alone. I tell you all the time, you riding, along, riding around at least four deep. Everywhere you go, this, this, you four deep. <laughs> God's with you. The Holy Spirit's with you. Jesus is with you. That's three. You're the four. You four deep. Then when you start throwing in goodness, and you start throwing in mercy, and you start throwing in grace, my goodness, man, you got a whole starting lineup. I love that. That's what I love. I love how King Nebuchadnezzar just had to take a peek. And when he took the peek, he said, hold up. I see four. <laughs> and if you would just sometimes take a peek at yourself in the spirit, yeah. Yeah. you would see your team. Hallelujah. And you would be truly thankful that you are not alone. You're not. Oh, amen. Well, God, we just thank you for this time. I pray that your purpose was accomplished today. I pray that the word was sown into the hearts of your believers, and I pray that it makes a mark that will never be erased. Lord God, I pray that they, they know that you are forever with them. And I just pray that you give them a, a peace that transcends all that they understand about what's going on, knowing that they're working with the God who isn't subject to what they know or what they understand, but you're working with the God that has a nature of doing the impossible in every situation. And so they remain connected they remain steadfast. They remain in your word, reading, praying, and loving you, knowing that the uncompromisingly righteous has never been forsaken, and their seed has never been seen begging bread. But God is with them. Say, God is with me. Wherever I may go from the furnace to the pit to the whale. 
<laughs> God has not forsaken me. God has not forsaken you. Y'all are still repeating me. Amen. <laughs> but he's ministering new every single day. And it's with a thankful heart, open and with gratitude, that I'm able to see it all. We pray that today's message was a blessing to you. If you would like to help us further expand the vision, simply text the word Give RTM to the number 41444 or visit us online at www.revealingtruth.org. Now remember, Jesus loves you.